I am Lieutenant Colonel Juan Batista de Anza Bezerra Nieto. But history remembers me simply as Juan Batista de Anza. I am best known for my exploits in California. I was among the founders of San Francisco. But I am here tonight to tell you that I was also playing a role in the history of your area. Pesky. Pesky fellow. Late in my military career, I was appointed as governor. This was in 1777. I was appointed as governor of the province of Nuevo Mexico, New Spain. Our capital was Santa Fe. Now, one of the first tasks that I had was to try to establish a peace. And the biggest obstacle to that peace were the Comanche tribes. We needed peace so that our people could ranch and farm and, and raise their families. The Comanche had a territory that was vast. It was what you call these days New Mexico, South Colorado, and Texas. They had almost 30,000 people at that time by my estimate. They were among the best horsemen of all the Indian tribes. Perhaps this is why they frequently raided our villages and our ranches, stealing the horses and oftentimes killing entire families. Perhaps the most vicious of these Comanche chiefs was named Tabibo Narigan which was his Comanche name, which meant dangerous man. We called him Cuerno Verde in Spanish. In your language is green horn. We called him that because he had a war headdress made of buffalo horns that were tinted green. This was a headdress that had also belonged to his father, who we also called Cuerno Verde. This chief hated my people because they had killed his father. His father was trying to wipe out our community at Ojo Caliente and so he was killed. You know, I know this hatred and this feeling of losing your father. My father and my grandfather were both killed but by the Apache tribe. So I decided to take the fight to Puerto Verde, to the Comanche. They would usually expect us at this time of year in August, 1779, to be waiting for them because this is the time that they would raid when there was no snow, there was no bad weather. So they would raid our villages. He would expect us to be home trying to defend them. So I tried to outsmart him. I took a group of 600 people they were soldiers, civilians, and also uh, Indians who were allies, other, other tribes. 600 people. We marched up the western side of the San Luis Valley, over Poncha Pass, and what across what you would probably know as uh, South Park, and then down, over and down Ute Pass. We followed the Rio Sacramento, which is now called the Fountain Creek down until we were out of the mountains and then followed it down here to near where this community stands now. The Ute tribe gave us safe passage through the mountains because they hated the Comanche as much as we did. So as we were nearing the Arkansas River, we came upon a large Comanche encampment and we attacked. But it was a limited skirmish because Cuerno Verde and his warriors were gone. So we captured the women and children and these prisoners told us that Cuerno Verde was at Taos, attacking Taos, but that he would be back in a few days. So we decided to head farther south and somewhere around uh, the southern part of what you now call Pueblo County came upon them. We attacked them. We identified Cuerno Verde by that green headdress. We killed him and vanquished 50 
of his warriors. I kept that headdress as a as a symbol of our of that battle and our victory, and of the peace that lasted for another 50 years. In fact, the Comanche themselves eventually became our trading partners. Now this battle took place, as I said, to the south of here. No one knows exactly where it is. Of course, I know where it is. I was there, but I'm not telling because I'm a ghost. <laughs> but I can tell you that there is a saying that the winners write the history. If that is the case, then why is the valley and the mountain and the stream and the battle all called green? It makes no sense. That is my story. I hope you find some more ghosts to tell you stories.